Is the election going to affect this year's housing market? Let's take a look. So one of the questions we get uh, frequently, about every four years, when we have a large presidential election is, what is that gonna do to housing prices, to inventory, to just kind of, what is that gonna look like for the housing market as a whole? Did you get your crystal ball ready for this one? There's a lot to unpack on this, and, and there's no way that we can say definitively what's going to happen, but what we're gonna try to do here is try to kind of unpack some of those statistics, look historically what's happened, kind of dive into the numbers to see, here's the trends, at least what's happened in the past, what trends we currently see happening and where we think that's going to kind of affect the market as we move forward here over the next you know, three, four, five, and then potentially two, three years down the road, so. So as we said, we're gonna dive back a little bit into history, sort of see what has been going on, see if there are some trends that we see. And one of the big things is that Nothing really kind of goes down too much with the elections, uh, in a bad way anyway. Um, no, I mean, this is, we have sales pulled up right now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to show you a couple of graphs kind of going back over the last 30 to 40 years. Uh, first one we're taking a look at is the uh, home sales up or down after the elections, and nine times out of 11. They've, funny number, yeah. they, they've gone up. Yeah, I mean, really, the only two years that they went down were in 80 and I guess technically 81 and 89. So it hasn't happened in 30 plus years. Both post Reagan. Yeah, and you know, I'm not a betting man. Well, I am a betting man, but <laughs> you know, you follow the trends there for the last 30 years, it's been going up. Yeah, it, would, it would shock they would me that they would probably go, we may see a little bit of a decline and we'll kind of dive into those numbers specifically. There's but. a reason why they probably will be going up and yeah, we'll touch on that in just a little bit. Um, the other figure is gonna be the home prices, which kind of ties into this really. Yeah. Is again, they've always gone up bar one time. I'll let you guys take a guess if you had to guess on which presidential election. <laughs> Yeah, 2009 was a fun time for the yeah. world. Yeah, we all yeah. had a great time. Kind of a major event that happened there. Yeah. So yeah, that was actually the only year that we saw a decrease in pricing year over year uh, was from 2008 to 2009, which, you know, major financial collapse, so. So this next draft is gonna show us a little bit about mortgage rates and kind of what happens there as well. And again, it seems to be that whenever the election cycles are coming up, the uh, folks in charge try and bring the rates down just a little bit, just to sweeten everyone up, you know, just to make them feel better about things. Now to clarify, the president does not dictate the federal interest rate. No. That is the Fed who does that, but pressures can be applied yeah. to yeah. make things happen. Phone and it's calls me made. Surprising how many times an election comes up, they want that to look favorable. Yeah, so again, you can see more often than not, the rates will drop a little bit when it comes up to the election cycle. And as we touched on just before, that's gonna affect the amount of people that are gonna to wanna to buy a house because rates are lower than people are gonna buy more, which means that house prices are gonna go up because more people are trying to buy those houses. And then obviously because there's lower rates, more people are buying, which means the sales go up. So it kind of snowballs everything. Yep. You know, more people back in, prices go up, more sales happen. Yeah, and we're gonna kind of start talking now more about what we see the market doing currently and kind of where we see those things going that will kind of apply some pressure to the market that I think is gonna probably cause some changes here in the next probably six months to a year. So now that we kind of move past some of the historical data and kind of seeing what has happened in the past to kind of drive, so we have a, kind of some indicators going forward. Now I have the indicators for, and we're gonna throw some graphs up here for you guys as well. So this is one that when I look at this, one of the biggest questions I get, election aside, is what's gonna happen with interest rates. That's probably one of the biggest concerns that people have. Everyone. And I think the uncertainty of the elections kind of feed into that because people feel like the election is gonna have more impact on this than it really probably will. But what I tell people to look at as far as interest rates go is watch inflation. And you know, here we have this graph here and this just kind of shows our, our levels of core inflation rate. Back in 2022 to 2023, we were up over 6%. We're down to anywhere from two and a half to three and a half percent, depends on who you're looking at, which is a good, we've been trending downwards. That's a good sign. So what that means and what that is going to apply to a consumer is where we're seeing projections from the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve has actually come out, they had projected they were gonna do four to five, I think was their initial, but at the end of last year, they had said, we plan on doing four to five cuts over the course of this year. Well. Inflation hasn't gone down quite as much as they wanted. So they actually did not do cuts the first three meetings. 
but they are planning to, I think we're at like a 95% projection on both September and November that we'll see rate cuts. So right now they're projecting 89.6% chance that we will probably end up finishing the year out at a five and a quarter to five and a half percent interest rate. Now, what does this mean? My girlfriend texted me today and goes, oh, they said their interest rate's gonna be five and a half percent by the end of the year. That's the Federal Reserve rate. Different thing. Different thing. So they are not directly tied together, but they kind of are. As Shane, and we're gonna end up having Shane on, on here in a little bit to kind of go through what, from the buyer side of things, because that's a whole separate issue. But from a financial side, there's about a one to one and a half percent usual delta between the Federal Reserve rate and probably what you're gonna be seeing as the market interest rate for a home loan. So if we're sitting at about a five, say 5% Federal Reserve rate, you're probably gonna be seeing prices or your, your interest rates of six to six and a half percent. So that's what that kind of correlation means. Now, that being said, we're seeing that they're probably gonna drop by the end of the year, which is good. It means more buying power for folks, which is a good thing. I mean, we've seen prices, I think that's why we've seen such a stagnation of the market here recently has been when you're getting interest rates up in the 7% along with price increases, it's just tough. Yeah, no one wants to move, no one wants to buy. It's I mean, yeah, you have, you have a whole, you have a, the last 10 years of buyers who have locked in. You know, what'd you guys buy? What you bought? First one was 3.2, and that was high for the yeah. time as well. We missed then, the boat. And then you what, four and a half now? Is it the one, your new one? Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> draw, changing those rates just completely changes what you're looking at. So they're thinking over the next two years, projection-wise, they're thinking there's a down, directly downward trend line from the end of 2024, they're thinking probably 5.1, give or take. And they're thinking by 2026, they'd like it to be down to 3.1, which would be... Leave as a kind of a five. Sub, sub five, yeah, yeah, sub fours to fives, which is a very, that's a great interest rate. Yeah. And you know, like we talked about, where we see that going, what does this mean for most people? So if we see, lower inventory levels because we do typically see that prior to an election usually we see a little bit more of a drop off real estate is very seasonal in the sense that we see most of our transactions from april to august so kind of when school is starting to end and be out and then once school fires back up again we see it kind of slow back down now usually that slows at about november um, in election years we usually see that kind of fall off more end of september october so if we see a pairing of a drop in interest rate and a drop in inventory, this is basic economics, lower supply, higher demand, what happens to prices? We're gonna go up. So I, as far as projections, I mean, I think where do we see the market going? How do I think the election's going to affect people? I think we'll probably end up seeing a little bit of a, of a surge in the market come December to even next spring. I think people will get back in the saddle a little bit quicker than they have, or they would usually. You know, like you said, most people would kind of January, yeah. February, be like, okay, we're gonna start looking at it. Whereas now we're probably gonna get all the calls in December, but like as soon as Christmas is over, we're gonna get right into the home search because- I think once we get past, everybody in every presidential cycle, you do have a little bit of a tendency of, people don't like uncertainty. Doesn't matter if you're team red or team blue, we don't care, I don't care who you vote for, it doesn't matter. What ends up happening is people, they panic a little bit and they're just, they don't know what's going to happen. So when they do that, in most instances, when people panic, they do nothing. 80% of people in a, an emergency situation freeze. That kind of applies to most people as a whole. So most people, if you're worried or stressed, they kind of just sit on the sideline and wait to see what happens. Now, once it's more definitive, whether you like the outcome of the election or you don't like the outcome of the election, it is what it is, we gotta move forward. So that's where I think once that is determined, people kind of figure it out and go, you know what, gotta move forward. And I think that's where you're gonna see come November, come December, and moving forward in the next years. As long as the Fed doesn't slash interest rates in the next six months, it's my only concern. Sounds like a Black Friday. Scenario. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's great. If, if they do a, you know, 100 basis points would be a huge, there, I've heard rumors of 100 basis points, which would be almost one full percent. That's a huge jump. If they get to that point, that could be a little worrying, but I think if they do a 50, 75% base, or 50 to 75 basis points, I think that's gonna be more of a healthy, I think would be in a better spot. And I think you're gonna see a kind of more positive upward trend in the market. 
So what do you think, David? What do you think is going to happen with the election? <sighs> I don't know. I know England's screwed, so I'm <laughs> sure the US won't be much better. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> well, guys, that's our crystal ball for today. Please leave comments down below. Don't get nasty. I don't care about your politics. Don't tell me who to vote for. I'm not going to tell you to vote for. We're just here looking at the numbers and what it means for you as a consumer and when it comes to buying real estate. But if you guys like the content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Later.